Hello everybody, this is another round of Blender challenges and we're still on the theme of hard surface. I'm trying to help you embed those skills that we learnt last time and we're particularly looking at topology. This is all part of a much bigger course on gabbit.co.uk where you can go from beginner right through to advanced and all the courses are free. You can also go to the Discord server, there's lots happening on there and this challenge is a response to someone's question on the Discord server. So get along there and join in the discussion. All the links are in the description. Okay, as usual, I'll show you the shape. I might give you a hint, and then it's a chance for you to have a go at it. Okay, so here's our first shape, and your hint is subdivision surface. This shouldn't be anything too new for you if you followed through the last exercises. Okay, have a go at that. Right, so how did I make this? Let's go to the side. Shift A, mesh plane. That's to add a plane, of course. Scale it in the Y, so it's roughly the same size. And then let's go into edit mode. I'm going to control R for a loop cut and create six cuts. There we go. And loop cut this way, control R, and two loop cuts this way. Then I'm gonna go in and grab the faces, one, two, three, and extrude. From there, all we need to do is add the subdivision surface modifier. Let's turn it up a bit. Go back to object mode and click smooth. And back into edit mode quickly, I think it's just a bit higher, there we go. Pretty much the same now. Okay, so that's how we create these sort of blobby shapes in our objects. Okay, so it's time for the next one. Now this one is different, and you'll notice there's a very sharp edge. So you've got to think how I did that, and your tip is the topology is essential. Now it's worth having a go at this point, just to try it out, but if you're really struggling, the second tip is the inset tool. Okay, so have a go at that. Right, so how did I make this? Well, I'm going to bring back my other one from the other layer. So I'm just going to click on layer one and let's bring this one across. So M to move layers and I'll move it to layer two. Now I'm going to go onto layer two. There it is. Now let's look at the topology of that one. And I'll hide my subdivision surface modifier. Now it's fairly straightforward. Let's take this one for example. If I want to sharpen an edge, I can add a loop cut and pull it down. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. That's great. But why is it not as sharp as this one? Ah, because it's got a, another edge loop going around the outside. Let's just enable this button here. This edge going around here, I need an extra one just outside it. But it's a bit awkward because now I need to control R and I can create another one there, which looks good. But if I go into edit mode, I haven't got as much control because it actually needs to be around the outside. So I could get my knife tool, I suppose, and start cutting. That's K for knife tool. And select Enter to make your cut. Then I can come across here. And it's making a bit of a mess of my topology, as you can see. But now I haven't got this slight slope here. And I've got more control because I could add another loop cut in here if I'd cut it correctly. What's the correct way of doing that then? So although this is a good result, it's not the best result. I'm going to undo those cuts and go back to this point. It seems to be working fine, but I'll show you why in the next model that this is a bad approach. Over here, we have the correct approach. So I have a loop cut around here that's flat against the edge. I'll explain that a bit more by creating the model again. So Shift A, plane, scale it in the Y, add my loop cuts, another two across here, grab those faces, and before I do anything else, I press I to inset. Now I've created that topology which I can add loop cuts in if I want to sharpen. So I can then extrude this, I'll extrude it once and twice, ready for my subdivision surface modifier. And we'll up those, and we'll go into object mode and press smooth. Just bring this up quickly. So this is better topology because now I can come in and I can add a loop cut in here. I could even bring this loop cut down to tighten that edge up. That's my preferred method of doing it, with the inset tool. There are other methods, but I don't want to confuse you with those at the moment. The inset tool works well for this sort of thing. I might add other methods later on, in later episodes. Now if you've got a model and you've already done this and you didn't do the inset, you can research the bevel command, which I'll introduce later on. So although they look the same, this one and this one have better topology because of that edge loop that goes around that you can then add more edge loops inside of. That's the important point that I'm trying to get across. So let's go to our last one. So this one's quite a tough one, and this is the one that Rise from the Discord server was asking me about. 
Now you could just have two separate objects and if you have a very, very sharp edge in there, then that's fair enough. And if this was a metallic object, it would probably be welded on anyway. So it would be a separate object put on this object. But it illustrates an interesting point if you are trying to make them out of the same object for some reason. And there may be instances in hard surface modeling where this is important and they do need to be from the same shape. So this is a tough one, but have a go. But if you're fairly new to this, you'll probably fail with this one. Don't worry about it, but having a go and the process of failure will help you because you'll be able to see where the mistakes are and you've tried it for yourself. My hint which may help you is proportional editing. It's not something I've mentioned very much in my previous tutorials, so don't panic if that doesn't make sense. Okay, so how did I make this one? Let's start afresh. I'll put my cursor to the center with Shift S, cursor to center, Shift A, mesh, cylinder. And I'll just use the default cylinder. And when it's subdivided, I'll just make sure the top and bottom will actually hold its shape. So I'll inset that one and that one. And I'm going to create a loop cut down the middle. Then I'm going to create a loop cut on top of that. So here's where I want to create my inset along here. But first, Rise was asking for this sort of curve shape. How can you do that? Well, if I grab two vertices like this, go to proportional editing, which is down here, and press G then Z, so grabbing the Z axis, the proportional editing is whatever vertices are next to it or inside this circle of influence will be changed and modified with my movement. So I can move it up like that. Now if I go to face mode and select these faces, press full stop on my numpad to zoom in on those, and press the inset tool and it's created my inset for my extra loop cuts if they're needed. Then I extrude that a tiny bit and extrude it again. Remember to turn proportional editing off with O on your keyboard or come down to this tool again down here. Disable if you want to move any of your shapes around. Now mine was out a bit further I think. I'll just pull it out a touch more. There we go. And I'll add my subdivision surface modifier. Now because I've got this inset in here, this is a nice sharp point. Let's bring the views up a bit and smooth it out. And that's not looking too bad. Let's sharpen the end up. And you can see the similarities. If I want to make this edge hard, then I can come in here and do some loop cuts here as well. What you might see is a tiny bit of pinching here. And that will happen wherever you've got what are known as poles. So any vertices that has four edges coming out of it, that's a normal vertice. But any that have three or five or more is classed as a pole. And that sometimes causes pinching. So some pinching is unavoidable. I possibly could have avoided it if I had moved my loop cut up more perhaps. And this loop cut down more. And my inset wasn't so great. Let's see how that works. Pretty much the same. So I'm just experimenting there for my own sake, because of course I'm still learning as well. You never stop learning. And you can see it's not so hard across the top there as it is over there. But it's using that inset tool that's vital so that we can now add loop cuts and sharpen this shape up if we want to. And that's the major reason when using subdivision surface modifiers especially that people say keep to quads, because poles can cause this type of pinching. And that's why people are often asking the question about triangles and quads because most people will say try and stick to quads wherever possible and after a bit of experience you'll see where you can and where you shouldn't use triangles in your models. Okay so I hope that helps. They're quite tricky concepts we'll be going over them again in the next few episodes. I hope that answers your question Rise but in all honesty I think it might be better for this particular shape just to use a separate object but if you really want it to be one object then I believe this is the best way to go about it. Please do put in the comments any thoughts that you might have. Because again, I'm still learning and maybe someone's got a better way of doing this out there. If so, then I'll gladly put it in the next episode. And do remember the Discord server, come along and join us over there. Thanks for watching.